Hey, what is up guys? Eric Thane here from Cinema Mastery, and today we're going to be talking about soft light versus hard light and when to use each. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, so obviously lighting is an extremely important part of cinematography. In fact, I always say that lighting is like 80% of cinematography. If you can learn lighting, if you can get really good at lighting and making things look good with your lights, uh, it'll take you 80% of the way there. Like the rest of the stuff is just like little details that will kind of help you get to 100%. But like it's lighting that's going to be the biggest thing. And so uh, we're going to talk about lighting in this video. And one of the things that I get asked about a lot and that I think comes up for filmmakers is the difference between soft light and hard light. What is the difference between those two things and when do you use soft light and when do you use hard light? So first things first, let's talk about what is soft light? Like what do I mean when I say soft light? So when we say soft light, really what we're talking about is light that has uh, soft or fuzzy shadows. So for example, something that's soft, you're gonna see a gradation from light into shadow rather than just a hard line like what you would get with hard light, right? So for example, if you look at my face right now, uh, you can see that the light kind of gradates from light into shadow slowly and softly, and that's because I'm using a large soft source here to light my face. If we had like a single point light, or something that was like a harder light source, then you would see really hard lines. Like for example, underneath my chin, you know, this this light right here, uh, you'd see just like a really hard line. There would be no um, fuzziness or no blurriness to the line. And uh, that's what we're talking about when we talk about soft light. Now, it, it matters because there's different use cases for both and they have different feelings and they change kind of the image that you get and the look that you get based on which type you use. So soft light is created by having a larger source. In fact, the only way, the only way you can make a light softer is by making the light source larger relative to the subject. That means that, for example, if I've got a light like this, it's got a soft box on it. So this light on me is about three feet wide by three feet tall. It's an aperture light dome. And so that's my light source. I've got a large light source and it's very close to me, which is why it's creating a very soft light on my face. If you were to take this light source and you were to move it back 20 feet and uh, obviously increase the brightness so that we get the same level, you would notice that it would be a lot harder because it's not as close to me. So the only way you can make a light source softer is by making it bigger relative to the subject. And that relative is really important because it's not just about making it bigger. For example, the sun is the biggest light source ever, right? It's massive, and yet it still produces really hard light because it's really far away. Relative to us, relative to the subject, the sun is just a tiny dot in the sky, which is why it produces a really hard light. So there are a couple ways that you can take a smaller light source, like an LED light or something like that, and turn it into a larger light source, and those are by using diffusion or bounce. Diffusion is a material, like a soft, white, fabric-y material that you blast the light through, and what it does is it, it scatters the light. It spreads the light so that it becomes a softer light source. So when your single point light hits that diffusion and fills up that diffusion frame, well then the size of the diffusion frame now becomes the size of the source, which is larger, which makes it softer. The same thing applies for bounce. When you shoot a light into a bounce, that entire bounce then becomes the size of the source, which means it's bigger and it's going to be softer. Now, one thing that I think people get a little bit confused on when it comes to diffusion and bounce is that in order for diffusion, for example, to work, there has to be a little bit of distance between the light source and the diffusion. If you put the diffusion right up next to it, it's not gonna make that big of a difference. And the reason is, if you can imagine a light pointing at a diffusion, if it's really close to it, it's gonna create a circle of light in the middle of that diffusion. That circle of light technically is defining the size of the new source. The more you back up the light, the more that circle of light is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and actually fill up that diffusion frame. And so it is making, if you can fill up the entire diffusion frame, it's making the entire diffusion frame the size of the light source, which is going to give you even softer light. For example, I have one of these Aperture MC lights right here. And something that I see people saying very often is that they come with these really cool little uh, plastic diffusion things you could put on front of them. And so people will take this light and they'll put diffusion on it. So this doesn't actually make the light softer because as you can see, it's actually still the same size as the original light. If I put this up next to my face, it's not making the light source any larger relative to my face. Now you might be asking, well then what is this for? What is the purpose of it? Well, the reason that they ship with these is because these types of LED lights 
have multiple LEDs within them. And if you were to look really closely, you'd be able to see with a light like this, multiple shadows, because it's not just one light, it's actually lots of different lights inside of this lighting up your subject. And so by putting this in front of it, what it does is it turns it into basically one light source so that you don't see those multiple shadows. Point being, for the light to be soft and for the diffusion to work, there has to be some separation and the diffusion has to be larger than the original light source in order for it to make your light soft. So now let's look at a couple different situations when you might use soft light versus hard light. Now, the first thing that's gonna guide this is gonna be motivation. Now I talk about motivation a lot, uh, rightfully so, because it's a really, really important part of lighting and cinematography in general. Motivation basically just means looking at the purpose behind your lighting. What are you trying to motivate? Is this a window light? Is it a lamp light? Is it an overhead light? Is it the sun? Is it the moon? What is it? And as you might imagine, uh, all of those different characteristics can change a lot of how you actually do your lighting. And so is this a light that's supposed to be soft or is it a light that's supposed to be hard? For example, if you're trying to motivate sunlight, you're probably not going to use very soft light. You want it to be pretty hard, otherwise it's not gonna look like sunlight. Or if you're trying to motivate window light, you want it to be very soft and not hard because typically window light is really soft. So motivation is gonna be the first consideration whenever you're looking at lighting, like which should I use? Should it be soft or hard? Well, what type of light source are you trying to motivate? And then kind of work from there. The second consideration that I always give to soft versus hard lighting is, am I lighting faces? So typically soft lighting is considered more flattering and just better looking all around on faces. In fact, you'd be hard pressed to find a commercial or movie where they're lighting faces with hard light. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, it can happen, and again, that's why I talked about motivation first, because motivation kind of trumps everything, so motivation is the most important. But even in situations where it would make sense where the light would be hard because it's coming from the sun, you'll see people actually soften it on people's faces just to make it more flattering. So even if you're shooting outside, what I would do typically is if I want something to be motivated by the sun, I will backlight the subject with the sun and give them a nice rim light using that hard light and then use a bounce or diffusion or another light source in order to give them a soft light on their face. It's not technically natural, it's not technically motivated, but few people will ever notice and it is gonna look a lot better on your subject and a lot more flattering. Another thing that you'll see cinematographers doing is if you do need to use hard light on a subject, what they'll do is they'll allow the hard light to hit the body of the subject, but then use diffusion in front of that light in just the right spot in order to make the light soft on your face. Again, not really natural technically, but it works and it usually looks good. And lastly is the wide versus the close up. So one of the things you might be wondering is, well, what if I'm in a situation where I don't have the time or the space or the resources or the budget to create a really large soft source on a wide shot, for example? Well, why does this come up? Well, because on a wide shot, you don't have the ability to just bring in a light really close and have a light like this, it's like three feet by three feet that's really close to me that produces really soft light. On a wide shot, in order to get that same level of soft light, I might have to have like an eight foot diffusion or a 20 foot diffusion or a 50 foot diffusion. That's why you'll see in movies and like maybe really, really high end commercials, you'll see them using like 50 foot diffusions or 50 foot solids for negative fill. And they've got them up on cranes and they've got these huge crews and all this time and these big budgets. And you know, you don't see that very often because it's really hard on a large scale, on a wide shot, to get really soft light. And so in that situation, typically what you're gonna do is just don't worry about it, honestly. Um, what I would do in a, on a wide shot is just kind of backlight my subject um, so that I get that light and that shadow, so that things are looking good, we've got that shape and that contrast, but don't worry too much about making the light look perfect on your subject's face on the wide shot, because the reality is that nobody's really gonna be looking that close and it's probably just fine. But then when you go in for the close up, that's where you bring in your bounce and your diffusion and your negative fill and everything and you start shaping the light and getting it looking just right so that you can make sure that you're finessing that close up, make the close up look really amazing. And then the wide shot is kind of where you just rough in your lighting, uh, get it kind of generally in the right place and uh, usually it'll work out just fine. 
So there you go, there's a quick look at the differences between soft lighting and hard lighting and in what situations you might use soft versus hard lighting. Now obviously there's a lot that goes into lighting and cinematography and making lighting look cinematic and there's more to it than just whether the light is soft and hard. And so if you're somebody that's a filmmaker and you wanna learn lighting and like really understand the principles and the theory of lighting so that you can shoot truly cinematic images, I wanna invite you to check out my Lighting Secrets course, which I'll link down in the description below. The course takes you through my entire approach to lighting, how I look at lighting, how I approach a scene, and how I light my scene so that I can get cinematic images anytime by walking through the exact same process on every single set. So go ahead and check it out. The link is down in the description below. If you have any questions about this video, please let me know down in the comments, and I will see you on the next one.